Hi, Captain Steve from BoatTest.com, and today I'm going to conduct a features inspection and performance evaluation of an all new boat from Aquila, the 32S. S is for sport, an excellent day boat. It's also a weekender, but it's an Aquila. It's so much more than the sum of its parts. Let me show you what I mean. We'll start here at the bow that's remarkably roomy because it takes full advantage of the catamaran's huge beam. And notice that the walkthrough is offset to the starboard side a bit. So we have 49 inches to one side, 29 inches to the opposite side, and the two seats are separated by 22 inches. They're 13 inches off the deck, which makes them comfortable to get in and out. Both have flip down armrests to the center, so we don't need to get to a pinch point to unlatch those. There's deep storage to the starboard side, plus additional storage up forward that's accessed by turn and lock latches. There are also speakers to both sides, and this is a separate zone so we can have the stereo cranking at the stern and no sound coming out from the front if we have the kids taking a nap up here. There's a standard filler cushion, and we're already seeing the upgraded attention to detail with Aquila. The two-tone upholstery, the diamond stitching, it comes in mocha or storm gray, and carbon fiber beverage holders. And we can also get a pop-up sunshade overhead. There's a hatch in the center over the quick windlass. This is handling the chain and rope road that's easily accessed through an opening on the side. There's a center-mounted cleat. Rollers mounted just inside the cap rail. And the anchor is also connected to a swivel. There are four cleats to the bow, two to the side, two to the front. All of them are nine inch and pull-up style. And that brings us to the walkthrough, which is 24 inches wide. The opening windshield is held open by a catch that needs to be unlatched. I'd rather see that be a magnetic catch because it's a lot easier to open and close. There's an air dam that's held in position by a post and socket. Six inches down, takes us into the cockpit area. And then we have a bit of a galley over on the port hand side. There is a sink with a cover. Notice that there's a small post right here that holds the cover in place. Clever idea right there. Nice little sink area, and then we have an electric grill. This can be operated off of an inverter or the 5KW diesel generator. There's also a refrigerated drawer just underneath, and then there's a wastebasket right alongside. This is opened by a turn and lock latch. I'd much rather see that be a lift and lock latch if there was ever a place for one. That's it. Notice there's a stainless steel grab rail going all the way around the side and the grill is also accessible from the side so we can keep on grilling while leaving the walkthrough to the bow accessible. Now directly across to starboard is a head compartment. Take a look at this. Six feet, two inches of overhead clearance. Sink over to the starboard side. Corey encounters. It's a wet head. So there's a pull out sprayer. Nowhere to hang the sprayer though. Hull side window with an opening port light for ventilation. There's another ventilation source by the overhead hatch. Mirror just above the hull side window. It's an electric flush toilet. Stairs are offset, so you come in with your right foot first. Make sure you do that. Now, just at the aft bulkhead, access port giving you access to the electronics behind the helm. That's great for installations. There's also air conditioning in this compartment and a 110 volt outlet. Nice touch there. Now to get back out, I'd like to see a grab handle right here. There isn't one. That would be a nice touch to have. Now there's so much storage down below and in fact Aquila is so good at taking advantage of storage. I'm surprised there aren't rails around this area to take advantage of this dead space. I'd like to see that. Now, always with Aquila, they maximize space. This boat is also a capable weekender. There's a cabin right inside here. Make sure that you make yourself aware. Flip up the footrest before you open this door that's held open by a magnetic catch. Let's take a look down below. A lot of room down here. We've got headroom of six feet two inches, a berth measuring 79 inches and an average width of 52 inches. Plenty of storage with shelves over to the starboard side. Hull side window with an opening port battery switches, a C-Zone display, and electrical switching behind me. Steps are offset like we saw with the head over on the starboard side, so make sure you step in with your right foot first as you make your way down. Air conditioning and 110 volt outlet. Really a nice place to spend a weekend or give the kids a place to take a nice comfortable nap. This is kind of a comfortable seat that I'm on, but it's just a shelf, so a cushion would be a nice addition. And like the head compartment, 
I'd like to see a grab handle right next to the companionway. Now moving back further into the cockpit area, this is a space that takes full advantage of the boat's 12 foot, eight inch beam with seating for what, 11, 12 people at least all around this table that's on a fixed pedestal. And it's of course an expandable table. There's storage under all the seats. This one is an insulated storage so you can put your ice and cool drinks in there. Storage over here, especially in the seat back, I mean, that's holding 15 life jackets right there, and we've got beverage holders in this spot. Directly across under these seats, huge storage, enough to hold a big cooler. Turn and lock latch again. That's a perfect spot for a lift and lock latch. Now these aft seats, a lot of creativity going on here. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, notice that we still have open cockpit space to the center and both sides. That could be fixed by moving the staple rails forward, dropping the armrest down, and closing off the center gate. This seat also has some additional tricks to it. We can make it into a double wide chaise lounge or lay it down into a sun pad. By removing the staple rails and lifting the seats and the hatches they're attached to, we can get access to two mechanical rooms that are holding bilge pumps, water pumps, air conditioning pumps, filters, the 5KW generator, batteries, and so much more. Now all this is under the protection of the standard hardtop six feet eight inches off the deck and includes two forward opening hatches, speakers, LED lighting, and an optional SureShade extendable awning. Now as we make our way out to the swim platform, I can't help but notice that these seats, like the bow, are in a 60-40 split, 48 inches and 38 inches to the starboard side. Rails are 28 inches apart at the swim platform and we can also reverse the gate so that it gives us a little more protection to the starboard side. Maybe a chain over to the port hand side would be nice. Got a hatch over a swim ladder and again, turn and lock latch. Like to see a lift and lock latch, it would make things so much more convenient and there's nothing really keeping this in the open position so it just falls off. Magnetic catch would be a nice idea right there. The ladder, in true Aquila form, really beefy ladder. They did a great job on this. You pull a pin and lower away. And we've got handles for when we come out of the water. Really nice setup. Plus, once the ladder is deployed, the hatch closes. And you've got an excellent reboarding platform. To both sides of the swim platform, the standard engines will be 225 horsepower. These are the upgraded 300 horsepower that also comes with JPO that gives you joystick operations. Now also in this area, we have one, two, three, four optional rod holders, a nine inch stern cleat and no midship cleat, just a fender cleat. Now let's take a look at the helm, carbon fiber panel, Compass offset to one side instead of in line with the helm, but that's so that we can have room for a 12 inch Raymarine display over to one side. Vessel view display just underneath the compass and there's a Fusion stereo just onto the flat panel. Glove box over to the side. There's a stainless steel grab rail and there are push button electrical switches just below the grab rail. In addition, we also have a C-Zone system interfacing with the Raymarine screen. Now over to the right is the joystick, and I can't say I'm entirely happy with the positioning of it. I'd rather see it back in this position so I can turn around and face aft while I'm coming into a dock, or even better, put it over to the port side of the helm so that I can be in the walkthrough to the bow and facing aft. Either position will work just fine, even if you're using it with the autopilot and navigating from waypoint to waypoint. Just behind its current position, the DTS, the digital throttle and shift. The steering wheel, mounted to a tilt base. Now down below, there's an angled footrest and then a flat area. I'd like to see the ability to put my feet a little recessed in there, just to give me a little space to put my toes inside. Now the seat is a double wide at 45 inches, two flip up bolsters. Directly across is an observer seat with a reversible seat back, flip bolster and a flip footrest. There's a storage compartment right alongside and a grab rail that doubles as another little storage area to place stuff. Now before we get underway and get our test numbers, let's take a look at some of the features of the hull out of the water. First thing I notice, there's a rub rail going right on down the stem so that we can beach this boat without causing any damage. 
Nice touch from Aquila there. Secondly, we've got a nice narrow entry. That's going to give us our performance as we're going through the waves. More importantly, though, as you look at both sides, we've got two chines to one side and three chines to the other because this chine forms two as we make our way back. Next, we've got a wave splitter right in between the hulls. This will break up any waves that come up and hit the hull up in the middle so we don't get that sneeze effect and water going up and shooting up over the front of the boat. Now, last but not least, in the back of the boat, some exciting news coming. See this cap right here? Another one on the other side. And there's another one right in the center of the hull. This boat is being engineered for hydrofoils coming soon. It's not available yet because it's still going through the engineering process, but we'll have some updated tests coming on this boat real soon when that's available. And if you buy the boat before the hydrofoils are available, it'll be available to you as an aftermarket. Now let's get underway and see how she performs. The Aquila 32S has a length overall of 32 feet 4 inches, a beam of 12 feet 8 inches, and a draft of 1 foot 10 inch. She comes standard with a pair of 225 horsepower Mercury Verados, but we tested her with a pair of 300 horsepower Mercs with JPO, giving us joystick functionality at the dock. With 14.6 by 17 pitch inertia props spun up to 5,800 RPM, our speed topped out at 44.8 miles per hour. Best economic cruise came in at 3,000 RPM and 16.3 miles per hour. It was at that speed that the 12.9 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.3 miles per gallon and a range of 319 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 280 gallon total fuel capacity. With the throttles pinned to the stops, we reached planing speed in an average 6.5 seconds, cruised through 20 in 7.4 seconds, 30 and 11.6 and 40 miles an hour came and went in 19.7 seconds. M-I-L-D-A, man, I love driving a Kila. Minimal bow rise when you accelerate. There is a little bit, but not much at all, so you're not gonna lose sight of the horizon. I would say it's almost a level attitude when you accelerate. There's no lean into the turn. She turns on a level attitude, so don't expect you're gonna be leaning at all into the turn, it won't happen. We've got just about a one foot chop here in the bay, so there isn't really much to comment on on how she handles sea conditions. There's really nothing to comment on. She slices through this and there's no pounding, no hole slap, nothing, as expected with a catamaran. The only thing I have to comment on is this fire extinguisher needs to go. It's hitting right in my leg. There's gotta be another place for that. Um, just don't like that. And I commented on the need for a place to you know, put your toes when I was doing the helm tour and it's really driving it home now. I really want a place to put my toes under here. It just seems I want to be a little closer to the helm. I just feel it more now that I'm driving the boat. Now this boat's got 300s on it and I feel that that's enough power. It doesn't feel like it's lacking at all. 225 is the base power for this boat. I don't think I would go with that. Now coming into the dock seems just as easy as when we left, but because the engines are so far apart on the hulls with a the catamaran, there's just so much more responsiveness. It takes minimal, minimal use of the joystick. In fact, she's so responsive that you can see once you start her moving, she just goes in on her own momentum without me even having to touch anything. Nice and gently up against the dock. So she's got the characteristic handling of an Aquila. She'll hold a ton of people and she's a great weekender. All of the boxes are checked on the 32S from Aquila. And that's my full features inspection and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.